on previous episode. Cloud Fiesta is the strongest alliance in the game. They filled more than 300 players and they have a satellite house like Eternal supporting them. It's pretty much an empire. The empire of the server. Out of three strongest armies in the game, two are from Clown Fiesta. A lot of the elite veterans of the games have consolidated into Clown Fiesta because they want to be on the winning side. I mean, how can you blame them? And only the good ones who can commit to the game are accepted. A coalition formed to challenge Clown Fiesta. Around nine houses formed this coalition to fight Clown Fiesta. They were successful. They took key cities. They even took the capital, the city of Trulvaros, and they were leading in points. Clown Fiesta might be overthrown this season. What if there was a game that is like Game of Thrones, but it's like an eSport, where every season you have a winner to the throne? That is the story of Conquest League. So enjoy the story of battles, politics, diplomacy, and betrayals. In short, the coalition that was winning fell apart and dissolved. But how? They were winning. To find out more, let's go deeper into the coalition. The Turkish community was the key part of the coalition, one of the key parts. They were definitely the bulk. And there were two main leaderships within the Turkish community that I know of. And I think they were working well together initially. One is Lee's Methikan, and the other one is General Cray. Now, both had different approach to beating Clan Fiesta. Methikan was more focused on diplomacy, shared goals, and building the community, and from that foundation of a strong community, build the army. That process is definitely more stable, but it's going to take longer. Meanwhile, General Cray was more focused on building the strong army that could beat Eden's and Orange's main army head on. It's rather more simple and blunt, but that requires lots of work and commitment because Eden's and Orange's main army is the strongest in the game. To be honest, both are needed to beat Clown Fiesta. You do need the diplomacy, you do need the strong community as a backbone, and you do need the strong army, because at the end of the day, if you don't have the strong army that could beat the main army of the enemy, well, you're not going to win, right? So all of these were requirement to beat Clown Fiesta, and it was divided up fairly well between the two you know, different leaderships. Let's stop with General Craig first. House Cabal was formed this season, so it's not even one season you know, old. Although some of the core members were with General Craig the, you know, for a long time, but that's not the whole army. So the entire um, army from Kebab under General Craig was created this season, and they're already on the top three. The top three armies in this game is Eden, Orjin, and Kebabs. And do you want to know how far they've achieved? So, Kebabs actually um, invited Ojin and Eden for one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, like, in the beginning of the season when they were really strong. And Ojin accepted this challenge of one-on-one. -on -one, while Eden refused. What does that mean? Come on, actions speak louder than any gossip or the rumors. If Kebab's army didn't grow enough to be a threat to Eden, why would they refuse? Like, maybe they have a good reason, but from what I see, they should have accepted it. Unless there's something else. Now, I don't know what is there, but one thing for sure. Kebab's did achieve something here. It was enough achievement for Eden to refuse the one-on-one -on -one fight, whatever the excuse is. That's an achievement on its own. And do you think building that army in such a short period of time is easy? 
or has no price? How much commitment and pressure do players must endure to build an army that strong? And how many mistakes would be allowed? Okay, because it's really hard for underdog to challenge the existing champion. It takes more work. And I think they paid heavy price for this achievement. Let me tell you how this game is when you want to be competitive, like when you want to be on the top three. I'm in second division in Havskaya in North American server, and we're a bit more casual. If you don't show up for the war, I just say real life you know, matters more. But if I were to be in a competitive um, arena, I would say, oh, we need you. Can you make it somehow? See, you know how, how that could change the pressure. And I could also say, yeah, you need to show up on the training. Oh, you need to level up. Oh, you need to have that unit. Oh, you can't make that mistake. If you make that mistake again, we are going to be ruined. So we need to make sure that you don't make that mistake again. Don't make that mistake again. How can this not build any resentment, but these are required? So a lot of players in Kray's army slowly built resentment or they got burnt out because it's too much work. And it's just a game. You're supposed to have fun in the game, but in competitive arena, it's not about having fun. It's about winning. It's very different. It'd be nice to have fun and win. And if you want that, Try joining Clown Fiesta, because that's where, you know, all the fun and winning is at. But if you're the underdog who's trying to get there, you have to make a choice. Because the world isn't perfect. You have to choose either fun or winning. And General Cray chose winning at the cost of burnout and resentment from other Turkish players. It is what the unforgiving nature of competition demands. Now, let's go over to Mythicon. What General Kray lacked was filled by Liege Mythicon. He was a very understanding and diplomatic person who did most of the work to organize the coalition. Val Fiesta is an established alliance. They're not only seasoned, they have both the quantity and the quality and synergies of multiple seasons. While lots of the houses in the coalitions are newly formed this season, like Project X, Espada, and Kebabs. The coalition may have the numbers, but most veterans who can commit on every war has joined Clan Fiesta because they want to win and they're willing to commit to win, so how can you blame them? So Mythican focused on building a community to be the foundation of the strong army. But this takes time. It doesn't get done overnight. And the war is already upon them. Clown Fiesta was following and attacking uh, Espada and Kebabs. For content, or I'm not really sure, but they were. The coalition started to merge houses with houses to create better quality army. But to do this, they needed to get more houses to merge to create that quality match. Since as an individual houses, they didn't have enough qualities, but if you merge in enough houses, they could get the quality at the same level or better than Clan Fiesta. To do this though, you have to satisfy many houses, like nine different houses, which is a lot of interest to be shared and a lot of commitment to be made. On top of that, internally, not every player in the army can make the same commitment or have the same interest. Some may not be that competitive, some might be more casual and retired. Because not all veterans are competitive anymore. Some of them just want to play the game and enjoy the game now. And Mythicon tried to keep them all together with understanding leadership, meeting the interest of as many as possible and their commitment as well. Mythicon was an understanding ruler and his leadership was keeping the community together from complete burnout. Unfortunately for General Cray, he could not afford to understand many because of the unforgiving nature of competition. General Cray's Kebab army was delivering results. They were the strongest army in the coalition and they were the only ones who could fight Orjin and Eden head on, but people were leaving Kebabs bit by bit. Some could not tolerate or meet the pressure 
but for the most part, people were just feeling the burnout because it's just a game and the economy is tough right now. So the real life might be adding the pressure to the game as well. However, as people were leaving kebabs, rather than losing those players, or worse yet, let enemies poach them, Methican kept them all in the coalition the best he can to keep them in the fight. He let some of the players fight in the army they want to fight in, and he'd understand their point of view and understand how sometimes they can't show up on the um, war due to real life circumstances or even burnout. Then everything hit the breaking point in the battle of Trulvaros, the capital city. One hour before the war. Clan Fiesta was sending combined army of best of Eden and Origin, numbering around 60 to 70 players. The coalition had two houses taking a break from the fight against Clan Fiesta, and the worst of all, the turnout was low for the Turkish community. Perhaps it's due to burnout or the other circumstances, but this misfortune, the turnout, was what pushed the coalition to the breaking point. Out of 60 kebab players that signed up for the war, only 45 showed up. Methican promised 10 players to create kebab army, but out of 10, only 5 showed up and some had a real life event like funeral. Methican had to convince some of these 5 players since they had some resentment with Kray perhaps due to pressure from the competition, or it could be something else. What matters is, not enough showed up. And this is surprisingly low turnout since the army that I'm working with, which is not very competitive, has higher turnout than them. Our turnout rate is around 85 to 90% of the sign-ups. This is extremely low turnout if it's only 5 out of 10 and 45 out of 60. This is not common for a competitive house. This is really bad for kebabs. The coalition could have sent more players, but they were not Turkish players. And Kray's kebab army could not take the risk of linguistic chaos since they're fighting their toughest opponent. The fight is hard as it is, and you want to add language barrier or linguistic chaos on top of that? Ugh. That does not sound good. So they could not risk that, so they had to stick to Turkish player. On one hour before the war, five players came from Methikan's Espada and three players from Triple X. Methikan said he could send more players if, if they're needed. So in total, the coalition could only commit eight players so far while Kebabs could only muster 45 players, total of 53, against 60 to 70 Eden Origin Army. 45 minutes before the war, Eden and Origin players are already marching towards Trulvaros, and only 53 players under Kray's command was at the capital city. Kray did send message to call for more reinforcement, but at this point, everyone else was busy committing to their part of the war. The message had longer delays and some reached to the right ears, but it fell among many other alerts. All you could hear on the Kebabs army was, do they know what we're dealing with here? This is the most important city for the coalition. They have more players and these are all elite players. We only have 53. Do they know what we're dealing with here? Only such words could be heard in the Kebabs army. Kray knew that his army wasn't set up for victory. Do you think it was? What do you think are the chances for you know 53 Kebab players to win against combined Eden and Origin army of 60 to 70 players? I'd say 30 to 35 percent chance of victory. If you want to set up General Kray for a victory, you'd have to give him at least 50 percent chance of victory. Let me tell you how this battle would go before I say it. I've played this game for around 7,000 hours and I've been in all position. So, the battle will stop and Kray will need more numbers and he will call for reinforcement and the coalition will send whoever they have available. 
and that reinforcement could be English speaker or German speaker, may not even be in the same communication line, or may be an elite player, may be a newer player. There's too many unknowns. And this is going to erode the quality and synergy of Kebab's army. And that will probably result in for the Kebab's army to lose cohesion. And Cray might lose to Eden and Origin. And at that point, Eden and Origin can say there was more than 53 defenders. Because that's true if he did get more reinforcement. Clock is ticking. And it's still 53 players under General Cray's command. The players in Kebab's army kept on asking, do they know what we're dealing with here? And is this all the support we get? These questions grew into a feelings of betrayal. So, a vote was held in Kebab's army. 30 minutes before the war, the vote was decided that Kebab's army would not fight the fight that is not fair for them and they felt betrayed by the Coalition who did not help them to set them up for a victory. Maybe Coalition did not set them up for a failure, but they did not set them up for victory either, for sure. 20 minutes before the war, Kebab army left the Coalition, and this is when Mythicon received the message from Kebabs, how they're done with the Coalition. Now, the entire Coalition felt betrayed. Because from Mephikon's point of view, he was ready to send in more reinforcement. But there seems to have been a communication clobber that prevented it. 15 minutes before the war. The coalition did the best they could. However, it wasn't enough time to organize and plan out a defense of the capital city of Trulvaros. And their army wasn't as good or seasoned as Kebab's war. But it didn't matter, the coalition had to fight against combined Eden and Origin army. The coalition gathered Triple X, Huns and Espera for defense. Around 60 to 70 players gathered on Tiptoe Varos to fight against Clown Fiesta's army. The war began on Tiptoe Varos. Eden and Origin army won and took the capital city within the first 15 to 20 minutes of the war. Now Clan Fiesta was ahead. There was no way to fight them, not without the spearhead of Kebab's army. Both General Cray's Kebab's army and the coalition, especially Mephik Khan, were left with the scars of betrayal. And both has every right to feel the betrayal. But this betrayal was sparked by the misfortune of not enough people showing up and the lack of communication that happened in the chaoses of war. Our Mephikon could not spare any more commitment because he is already overstretched. He can only give so much commitment to every single player and every single armies and houses because he's trying to upkeep the community so he could only spare five players and that's a lot from him, given how much he has on his shoulders. But that is not enough for General Cray's army. And they deserve more than five players, given how important they are. However, what can anyone do when there's such a low turnout? What can you do then? I think, personally, they had a good foundation, but they rushed it too fast and burnt out lots of the players with pressures and commitment. That is my opinion. What will happen to the coalition now? What will happen to General Cray's Kebab army? And who can stand against Clown Fiesta Empire? The Blanks? They haven't fought against Clown Fiesta yet. Find out on the next episode of Conquerors League. History. Thank you.